BioViz Connect is a web application that is built on top of the Cyverse discovery environment using the Terrain API. The purpose of BioViz Connect is to combine the cloud-based and high-performance computing resources available through the Cyverse discovery environment with data visualization within Higby. To access BioViz Connect, go to bioviz.org slash connect.html. You can also get here just from bioviz.org by clicking on BioViz Connect. To sign in to BioViz Connect, you need to have a Cyverse ID. This is provided free from Cyverse, so you can click, uh, we provided a link here, you can click here and create a Cyverse account. These Cyverse accounts are separate from BioViz. Um, we don't have anything, we don't see your password, we, we don't have anything to do with the, the account itself. So when you click on this button to sign in, you're gonna use your Cyverse credentials that you've created. So click log in. So again, we don't have access to your Cyverse password and you don't need a separate BioViz account. So once you've made your Cyverse account, um, or if you already have a Cyverse account, that's all you'll need to log in. So here's the BioViz, the BioViz Connect main page. Um, you can see your username here, and this is also where you'd sign out. The main page is designed to be very familiar with anyone who's used uh, cloud-based file systems. So anything like um, Dropbox or Google Drive. So kind of just start left, right, top to bottom. Um, these are quick links to some of the various folders, our kind of primary folders. So the user's home folder shared with me, which contains um, various files and folders that have been shared between users and then community files and folders that are provided or are public for all Cyverse users. At the top here, we have a search bar. Um, you can search files and folders. It'll search based on your current location. So either home, shared, or community. Um, in the main panel, we can see our folders and files. Um, this is a paginated list, so it goes to 100. Uh, anything more than 100 will then be on the next page. Uh, these can be sorted by name, uh, less modified, or size. So the example data set that we're going to look at today um, follows along with the BioViz Connect publication. Uh, to f that data is available through community, so anyone who uh, is logged in will have access to it. So I'm going to go to community. Uh, the data is under the BioViz folder. So note that navigating, I can click and select folders to enter a folder, double click on it. So we're going to go into RNA-seq. Revidopsis June 2009. SRP, the project number. And then we want to look at the reads. So a couple things to point out while we're here. Um, you can see we have this kind of breadcrumb trail. So you can see the current directory that you're in and where that's in relation to uh, the rest of the folders. It also allows you to easily jump back to a previous folder if you need to. You can also see that up here in the URL, um, you have the same thing. Your browser buttons will also work. So you can jump back to previous pages or forward um, and as long as you're logged in, you can use these URLs. So you, for instance, could have a, a URL bookmarked um, if it was kind of, you know, your favorite data set to jump to. So in this case, we want to start off by looking at this very top file. This is uh, SRR 10060893. We're interested in comparing this file to another file to get more information about these files, you can right click or click on this uh, three dot button here and click metadata. So all files and folders within BioViz Connect can have metadata associated with them. Adding or editing 
Metadata requires owning that file. So in this case, this is a public file. We have read access. So we can see the metadata, but we can't make any edits. Um, but someone has gone through and um, added metadata that for this file. So for instance, we can see that the genome version is Arabidopsis thaliana, and it's for the a it was aligned to the A thaliana June 2009 genome. Uh, a lot of the, the metadata that we're showing here is curated specifically for uh, kind of what we think is helpful for visualizing this data within the integrated genome browser. The genome version is uh, mirrors genome versions that are available within IGBY. Um, track color it will be how this uh, data appears within IGBY, uh, as well as the track name. So here we've got the SRR, so the, the name of the file, and it's a watered control. And we've got some comments about this. So this is a 25-day-old Rhabdopsis thaliana control sample, um, some as well as some additional information. Now, the file that we're interested in is this 894. So I know that uh, 893 and 894, and actually, I'll just go ahead and click on it. Um, so these are both uh, control samples. So, and both of these samples were sequenced on Illumina platform um, should have been to the same depth. Now I've noticed that in my size column here, uh, my 893 sample uh, is only 1 point, or is 1.61 gigs, but my 894 sample, which again should be about the same size, is only 669 megabytes. So something, something weird is going on here. Um, and I wanna take a look and figure out what is going on. So in order to do that, we want to view this data in IGBY. Um, if you haven't already installed IGBY, if you'd like to continue to follow along, um, you can go to biovis.org and click on Download Now to download the integrated genome browser. Um, IGBY allows for visualizations of lots of the most well-known you know, bioinformatics and then genomic data sets, um, such as BAM files, BED, um, GFF, that kind of thing. So studies, you know, ChIP-seq, RNA-seq, whole genome sequencing, uh, all those would be visible or viewable within IGBY. So I have IGBY up and running, and in order to visualize this data in IGBY, all I need to do is click on this view in IGBY button. It's gonna tell me it's opening a file in IGBY, so I'm just gonna do both of these files. And then I'm going to jump to my IGBY. Now, because that data was associated with the Rabidopsis thaliana genome, AB has gone ahead and just loaded that genome for me. And it's currently in the process of um, retrieving the data for those files and adding them to AB. So while it's doing that, I'm gonna make a few adjustments to the screen just to give us a little bit more visual space. So uh, by default, AB will show the uh, positive and negative strands separated. I'm gonna combine them by clicking down here in the data management table, this plus minus button check mark there and then I'll actually just go ahead and do the same for uh, my two files here and we're just gonna turn that off uh, we've got our two band files you can see if you're familiar with IGB uh, files are loaded as empty tracks so we're not going to try and stream that 1.6 gigs over my internet all at the same time now, I'm just interested in a single gene at the moment, and so I'm just going to go ahead and search for it. That's our 45A. I'm actually going to make one other change from the default. So it's currently loading Airport. I'm going to unselect Airport, and I'm going to load in Tear 10. Again, I'm going to put that all in one, and I'm going to change Tear 10. Actually, it doesn't matter. Okay, so. We've got our gene of interest. I'm gonna go ahead and load the data for that gene. So there's our TER10 models. And we're loading in our reads from our two samples that we're interested in. Yeah. I'm gonna put the 893 on top of 894, since so that's how it appeared. Uh, I'm also going to load the sequence for this gene, and you'll see why in one second. Okay, so now you can see our, our foreground track color 
So both these samples are green. They're both watered controls. Um, so A93 was the larger of the two samples. That was the one that was about 1.6 gigs. And this uh, looks pretty good, um, kind of about what we would expect in terms of reads uh, for an RNA-seq study. A94, which is that smaller file, uh, something something is wrong with this file. So you can see that the, the coverage for it is much, much sparser. And it looks like this coverage is very uh, vertical. So we've got these, these stacks of what look like duplicate reads. So it turns out that um, this file had a lot of, of or this, this sample ended up with a lot of PCR duplicates. Basically what, uh, by, by kind of poking around our data and visualizing it, um, you know, if we just looked at kind of the number of reads uh, on a spreadsheet or whatnot, you know, we might not have, have so clearly and quickly been able to identify that, hey, there's there's something very clearly wrong with this file. I'm going to jump back to BioVis Connect. So the second data set I want to look at is let's see, down here at the bottom. So we're still in the same directory. Um, so it's the SRR 10060911. So here again, we've got a disparity between two of our files. So here I've got a 1.83 gig, um, and this 9112 is a 454 megabyte. So uh, again, several times, um, this 9112 is several times smaller than what I think it should be. And the 911 again, so this is Rabidopsis data. Uh, in this case, this is a heat treated sample, uh, foreground color of red. Um, and these were 21 day Arabidopsis thaliana, uh, and the 912 should be the same. So, yep, heat treated, uh, foreground red. So, let's go ahead and view this data in IGB. So, I'm just going to do the exact same thing click view in IGB. I'm going to open those files in IGB so we can jump back here. Um, since I'm done with these files, I'm going to go ahead and actually just hide them. You can either hide them with this eye icon or uh, remove them. It might actually be better just to remove them. Okay, so we've got our two files. I'm going to go ahead and combine the plus minus trends again. And let's load the data and take a look. So before when we had the disparity in file sizes, it was due to uh, will look to be kind of bad data. I'm gonna put the 911 back on top of 912. Okay, so 911 should have been the bigger file and it looks, again, pretty normal in terms of what we would expect in terms of an RNA-seq uh, study and, and how those reads would appear in IGB. Um, 912, the smaller file, uh, actually looks perfectly fine here as well. Um, I'm not seeing the kind of stacks of reads that we were seeing in that, that previous example. Um, so what's going on here? So either we just have less sequencing or less reads in this area, or perhaps this 912 sample uh, had decreased expression. So again, it would just be fewer reads um, would appear here. There's an easy way to look at the um, depth of coverage for a BAM file in IGB is to actually just create a, a depth or coverage graph within IGB. So if you right click on the track name on the left side, go to track operations, and click on depth graph all, make a quick depth graph. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the 912 file, track operations, depth graph all. I'm actually going to drag these down and put them by their respective. So this is 912 in its depth graph and 911 in its depth graph. Now IGB will kind of optimize how these graphs appear. Um, so right now they look exactly the same. But you might notice that the y-axis for these graphs is actually quite different. Um, you can put these on the same y-axis by uh, shift clicking. So I'm on a Mac. And then in the graph tab down here at the bottom, I'm going to change the y-axis scale. If I just grab this and move it, it'll actually put them on the same scale. So now you can see they're both on the same scale. And indeed, our 912 file has um, fewer reads over our gene of interest. So here we've got up to almost 
800 to 1,000 reads in some locations, uh, or a depth of, uh, whereas here we have a few, or maybe 100 to 200. And we know we've got a smaller file size, so maybe there's just fewer reads. Uh, and if I had to guess, that's, that's why. So it's not that we're seeing a, a difference in expression between these two samples. I mean, we would expect because they're, they're you know, both were under the same experimental conditions that they would have a very similar expression. Um, so my guess is that the reason we're seeing this decreased amount here is just because the entire file itself is much smaller for some reason. So to get a better idea of this, what we need to do is scale the coverage graph so that we can get a, a kind of more accurate picture of expression of this gene for these various samples. Unfortunately, we can't really do that within IGBY. In order to scale it and create kind of a, a genome-wide coverage graph, it actually take pretty intensive computational resources, or at least more than and, you know, the ability to kind of right-click and immediate get, immediately get a new graph. So one of the features that's enabled by BioBizConnect is the ability to use the high-performance computing and the, the cloud computing infrastructure that's provided by Cybers to do uh, more advanced or, or more computationally intensive analyses on these kinds of files. So I'm gonna jump back to BioBizConnect. So what I wanna do, I wanna make a scaled coverage graph. So I'm gonna close out the metadata. So I'm gonna right click and select Analyze. If you've used the Cybers Discovery environment, you're probably aware of many of the apps that are available to use to run these kinds of analyses. For BioVis Connect, we curated the list of apps that are available to be more specific to visualizations that are useful for IGBY. When you have a file selected, what we do is we maintain a, an internal database that's aware of uh, what apps are currently available and what file inputs those apps can be run on. So for my BAM file, I have two options. I can make a coverage graph, which would be similar to what we did in IGBY, though this would make a genome-wide coverage graph, um, or I could make a scaled coverage graph. And this tool, you can click on here to see kind of more about it. So this is using DeepTools BAM coverage, and it's going to do um, some scaling on that using uh, counts per million mapped reads. I'm gonna go ahead and click on make scaled coverage graph. So we've got a couple options available to us. Um, try to keep it pretty basic. So I'm gonna name this, let's see, actually I'm gonna name it my file name. So it's SRR 100 I'm just gonna say scaled coverage graph. So this is just for my own kind of knowledge of what I'm running. Um, we've auto filled in the BAM file here. I'm actually going to, let's see that, I'm gonna copy that. So I'll need it here in a second. Uh, output file name, I think again, I'm just gonna give it SR100 60911. And I'm just gonna add scaled, just so I remember that this is the scaled coverage graph um, that I've created. And you'll see that the output here is a bed graph file. The final piece we need is the uh, BAI, or we need to uh, tell, tell the app where our BAI file is, um, so or the name of our BAI file. In this case, uh, it is the same name, just .bam.bai, and I do need the full path to it, so I'm just going to, I copied and pasted what was here down here, and then I just have to add a .bai to the end of that. It's about the most complicated thing you'll have to do. Uh, to run this analysis. So at that point, I can just go ahead and click Run Analysis. And then I want to do the same thing for 9.12. Make scaled coverage graph. It's our 100, 60912 scaled coverage graph for the file. It's our 100, one, two, scaled. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna copy the input file name, I'm gonna paste that here, and then just add the .bai at the end for my index file, and hit run analysis. If we want to know what the status of our analysis is, we can go over to the left panel, and this is our final link that we hadn't looked at before, which is the analysis log. So if we click on that, 
we'll see a list of all of the analyses we have run, uh, and when they were run, their names, and their status. As you can see, I've got a lot of various tests that we've been running. You can see the name that we gave our analysis, um, the app that we use, uh, Make Skilled Coverage Graph, uh, when we started, we haven't ended yet, and then the status, which is currently running. So statuses can be submitted, running, failed, or completed. Once a job has finished, whether that's failed or completed, you will get an email notification. That email is, is whatever email you used when you signed up for the Cybers account. Otherwise, you would just have to, to refresh this page um, to check on the status of that file. The length of time that it takes to run any analysis is going to be dependent on a couple different factors. The first would just be the, the size of the file. So the smaller files generally will run faster. The second would be how many other jobs are currently being run on the Cyverse HBC resources. Okay, so both of our analyses have now been completed, they completed successfully. It took about five minutes and 10 minutes to run. So where are the output files? So if you're in your home directory, then the output files will just be wherever your input files were. So if I was in home, example, then my output file would be in home example. However, if you're in shared or community, generally you're not going to have uh, write access to those folders since those are shared with you. So what we do is we put the output into your home folder and an analysis folder. And if you want to get there quick, you can actually just click on the name here and it'll take you right to the output files we're set. And see, I've got a lot of stuff in here, so I'm actually going to Sort this real quick by last modified. And all right, so here are my two samples, so 911 and 912. Now, before we view this in IGBY, we need to take a look at the metadata. So these are new files, so they have no associated metadata, so we need to go ahead and add that ourselves. So I know this is from Wrapped Up Thaliana, and it's the June 2009, and I want to make this red and I want the track name to be I'm just gonna give it that so you just say heat treated and go ahead and save that. <clears throat> now I'm gonna go to my 912 sample real quick and do the exact same thing. Okay, now the next thing we would need to do, and this will kind of depend on your setup, is to check and make sure that the file itself has been made public. So in order to view files in Igby, the files need to be made public. Um, what that does is it creates a public URL that can then be sent to Igby uh, and that Igby can access. Unfortunately, if your files are not public, if they're, if they're private, there's no way for us to be able to uh, stream that data to IGB. So in my case, I've actually made the entire folder public. So anything that's within here is then automatically made public. If I didn't want this to be public, all I'd have to do is click this link and it would make the file private. Um, but we do want it to be public. And actually the public link right here that you can see, um, if you wanted to share this with someone, you could actually um, copy that and then you know send it to them and they could hit that URL and download that file so it's kind of a, another way to access it so both of my files should be public so I'm going to go ahead and click view and Igby. do that for both of them and let's jump to Igby and so let's get rid of Get rid of the current data that's in there. Just gonna hide it. Okay, so our data have been added as new tracks. And I'm gonna go ahead and load that data. 
And then we can again shift click graph and make sure these are on the same y axis. They are. So now you can see that when the files are scaled, so before 912, I think was the smaller file. But once these files have been scaled to account for the uh, overall decreased number of reads that were in the 912 file, they're, they're actually both on, they look pretty much identical um, in terms of their scaling. So there's a few little differences here if you're interested in alternative splicing, but otherwise these files seem very, very similar. So that's what we would expect. These, these are our biological replicates. So we would you know, expect to see that their, their expression of this gene would be very, very similar. And that seems to be the case here.